One of my favorite features of the old Vanya Publications zines were the letters and reports submitted by readers. They are individual case studies of lifestyles and pursuance of self-liberation, and also present a sort of glimpse into the mind of a radical self-liberator. And possibly, most importantly, they are examples of a freer life, a freer future, outside of the control of the state and the servile society. And if there's something that's so desperately needed in these modern times, it's a little hope, a little light of freedom peeking through the seemingly all-encompassing darkness of totalitarianism. But first, just in case we have some new folks here, let me briefly define and summarize Vanu. And who better to explain it than our posthumous mentor and f uh, founder of this freedom strategy, Rayo. This is from Vanu Book 2, Letters from Rayo, which is available for free download at vanupodcast.com or in paperback format via Liberty Under Attack Publications, libertyunderattack.com. It reads, quote, Vanu is a coined word meaning invulnerability to coercion, coercion being physical attack by a volitional being against another volitional being or his non-coercively acquired property. I distinguish Vanu from liberty, exemption from coercion. Liberty depends on other people. It exists only to the extent that those capable of coercion abstain from it. Coercion, especially the institutionalized forms, war and regimentation, is one of the major problems of mankind. Practically all past efforts at solution have been directed toward liberty, trying to change the behavior of large numbers of other people. There have been countless attempts to reform governments, take over governments, destroy governments, and manipulate public opinion. You know the results. I believe that enduring peace and freedom can be realized only through Vanu, by reducing vulnerability to coercion. Vanu will most likely come gradually, primarily through lifestyle changes by individuals and small groups, but Vanu is not necessarily only for a few. Vanu will expand as far as there are people willing to do, end quote. So what I'm hoping to reignite is a project I've titled Vanu Resistance Reports. As I discussed in a previous video, I think it's important to highlight examples of resistance that don't require direct confrontation with those who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers. As an example, here's one that was submitted to Rayo by a pseudonymous individual, John Freeman, from the publication Going Mobile. Quote, while automobiles were not designed for spending any sack-out time in, they certainly can do the job in a pinch. Over the years, I've spent a lot of time living out of various cars, and it certainly saved me lots of funds that otherwise would have kept me longer at the distasteful working habit. I recall a 54 Chevy that had the steel bracing back of the rear seat removed, with a little keep-the-head-level padding and the seat out. The trunk and back seat area combined allowed plenty of room. Later, I acquired a little Citroen 2CV, 18 horsepower that had a rear seat that simply came out. I used this all over the West for a number of years. By removing the backing to the front seats, I and a mate had no trouble using the front seat area for the lower body. I recall one memorable trip when I took a week's trip with two adults and three little kids in this tiny rig. With all the seats removed, it was like a bed, and even in the freezing weather, it was more than warm from the body heat. After being run off a Mexican beach a few years ago, I and a girl and two kids wound up in a town in the same rig. The beauty of this auto camping is that you usually attract no attention. I've spent years in various motorhomes and buses, and every once in a while, I've gotten hassled in some strange town. I often overcome this by simply picking out a back street with a few houses on it, and then explain what I'm doing to the persons in the home and back of where we park. People are always glad to aid a decent-appearing nomad. Once, while hitchhiking across the states in the dead of winter, I managed to find enough small town auto back seats to survive in all my trek, yet I hate being cramped and curled up, and any car I own I alter enough to get a good night's sleep in. I'm not the only one. During a hard period in the 60s, I recall several down on their money and luck, uh, families who lived out of their converted cars in Mecca Canyon, a little hall east of Palm Springs. At this place and time, most persons are too spoiled and warped in vacuum brain values to camp in cars. Yet to the true veneur, it's a great and conspicuous on-the-road shelter. End quote. Of course, with the current restrictions on travel, the van nomad lifestyle may carry some complications. But nonetheless, that's the idea. That our Vanuan audience of self-liberators, you, submit an email, message on social media, blog post on your website, a video or podcast, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, in this correspondence, please discuss your Vanu lifestyle, experiences, views, opinions on what's uh, transpiring, maybe even theories too. Uh, maybe a little, about, little bit about yourself as well, uh, whatever you're comfortable with revealing. Uh, although if there's any doubt, uh, leave it out. I will then release it in video and podcast formats with personally identifiable information redacted. For example, I would just say Alex from Australia or whatever you specify in your correspondence. I really hope you consider helping me with this project, as I think it's extremely timely and important. Let's show people that freedom still exists, 
and that a life of servitude is merely optional. Let's give some folks some much-needed hope. That's all I have for you today. Please view these submission options on screen or in the show notes if you happen to be checking out the show on your podcast feed or wherever else. And always remember, Bonnie was yours for the making. Until next time, stay safe and stay liberated. <laughs>